Okay. Hello, everyone. Oh, well, I was looking to see if I have paint on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, today we are talking about saving on groceries because grocery prices are going through the roof. What? Well, some grocery prices are going through the roof. So here's the thing, guys. Yes, a lot of groceries have gone up, but a lot of groceries have gone down. And as I keep saying over and over again, that your grocery bill does not have to be going up. Mine has not. It's I've just been shopping sales and being careful and freezing everything I can so that when the prices go up and don't come back down again, I will have a stockpile of food that other people will pay 25 to 30% more when I'm paying the old prices. How did you manage that? That is a, I would say we got on our thousand dollar stockpile last year, we got a thousand dollar return on our investment. Wow. Or I mean a $250 return on our thousand dollar investment that we Percent. got last year. 250% return. 25%. We got two, we saved $250. Gotcha. Sorry. Okay. I've been painting all day and I'm tired. So I would say that we got a 25% return on our investment, saving us $250 by spending the money last year instead of this year. Now, I understand not everyone has $1,000 to spend on a grocery bill. So what can you do to save in your groceries? I'm going to give you a few tips. Please put your comments and your questions, put your questions in the comments, I should say. And Mike will send them to me. Um, and I will be happy to answer your questions. All right, number one, I know I sound like a broken record, but shop the sales ads. This is the number one way to save money on your grocery bill. You may have to drive 50 or 60, 70 miles. I am headed to Cheyenne on Saturday, which is a four hour drive from us. And I'm going to be hitting the big grocery stores while I'm down there picking up our planners right here. I'm going to get the rest of the planners. So excited. Well, the first half of the, the second order. And um, when I go down there, I'm going to take the hour, 30 minutes, probably 30 minutes, to run in to the store and um, pick up what they have on sale. Bring it home throw it in my fridge or freezer, and then I will have saved money for just an extra 30 minutes worth of work. So those types of things, yes, when we lived in Idaho, we drove 70 miles to the store to each way to go grocery shopping once a month in order to save money on our grocery bills. So there are things you can do, but it will take a little bit of work. All right. So guys, this video is brought to you by our Dining on a Dime cookbooks, 35% off right now with our Valentine's sale. We have volume one and volume two. Did you know they were on sale? I, I was like, oh, I love those books. I just couldn't get enough. It's the only cookbook you ever need. I know, and I have lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> you have, what, 15,000 in your garage? <laughs> and our gluten-free, dairy-free Dining on a Dime cookbook. So if you're gluten-free, dairy-free like me, I tested all of those recipes, and they actually taste good, guys. All these recipes in all of our cookbook have been tested, some of them for 70 years, by me and my family. And we know they work. We know they save you money. If you just follow these tips, you will save money on your grocery bill. You do not have to cut coupons. You do not have to do um, anything. All right, Kimmy from She's in Her Apron, my bud. I love you, Kimmy. Kimmy, we need a vacation together. <laughs> we need to just go sit on a beach not talk about work. What would we talk about if we didn't talk about YouTube? I don't know. Do Kim, if Kimmy and I did not have YouTube to talk about, would we have anything to talk about? Well, you have families. I don't know. We should test that out sometime. <laughs> I think, all you should, we do I think is it talk would be definitely YouTube. worth a try, Kimmy. <laughs> I think you should pressure her because I will make her go. <laughs> all right. She says, but do your homework and see if the store sells actually a good deal. Not all sales are worth it. And Yes, not all sales are actually sales. Just because they put it in the sales flyer does not mean it's on sale. I know that sounds crazy, but a lot of times they advertise their regular price just because they need to get that product sold. Maybe they got too much. Who knows? 
what happened, but sometimes that's what they do. Guys, put your questions in the comment. Mike will pull them and give them to me, and I will answer them in just a minute. Start cooking at home. You do not have to cook from scratch. I'm not talking about making your own bread. I'm not talking about even making your own scratch cake. But get a bake, uh, cake mix. It literally takes less than five minutes to put three eggs and water and oil in a cake mix, mix it up, throw it in a pan, throw on a can of frosting. You don't even have to make homemade frosting. But for $2, you can have a birthday cake instead of the $15 that it costs at the store. Cook dinner. Instead of spending $40 at the drive-thru, I about had a heart attack the other day and said, yeah, we're not eating out today. When I saw how much Wendy's was charging for hamburgers now, we have stopped our after Sunday church Wendy's, uh, what do you call it, run, dinner, whatever. We used to get Wendy's every day after church just as a treat for the family. No more. We would spend $15 or so after church. Now it would be $30, $40. It's crazy how much people pay for that. Sorry. You can come home, boys, and throw a hamburger on the grill and make it for less than $5 for everyone. So eat at home. And let me tell you, you are so worked at, you are so stressed out from working so much and you can't or don't have time to eat dinner or I mean cook dinner, maybe you wouldn't have to work so much and work so hard if you started eating home and literally took five minutes to make dinner. Peachy pork chops right here, Dining on a Dime, volume one. Pork chops were $1.49 just like a week or two ago here in my town. A can of peaches is a dollar, literally $5 by the time you add baby carrots or a package of broccoli and then add some um, rice or biscuits to that if you want. Even the canned biscuits. We're talking $5 for the whole family. And I have to say, I generally don't like pork chops, but man, those peachy pork chops are awesome. You like my peachy pork chops. I do pork like chops, your peachy pork you? chops. Yep. Yes, I know. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you got to start. You're not going to save any money by the time you eat up. Now, if you're a doctor or a lawyer and you're making $600 an hour or $400 an hour, okay, that's fine, I guess. But... I wouldn't, we make a significant, we make a significant amount per hour for our work and it is still not worth it for me to spend $40 for us to go eat dinner for one meal. I mean, I could get an entire week's worth of dinners for that same price. So find some easy recipes, livingonadime.com. We have over 1500 recipes and pages to and articles to save money on your grocery bill. It's all free. Sign up for our newsletter when you go over there. And three times a week, we send free recipes and tips on how to save money. Also, guys, if we ever get knocked off of YouTube, that's the place you're going to find us because the way YouTube is going, you never know how, um, what I'm going to say is going to get me kicked off because you guys know me <laughs> and my big now. But we love you, though. Oh, thanks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to have to tell you about the deer that we had to deal with today. Oh, my goodness. After we're done. Okay. <laughs> so we asked about it, too. <clears throat> uh, Darlene posted a question, and I will answer in just a minute. You guys post your questions, and Mike will pull them, and I will answer them in just a minute. All right. The next thing is stop wasting food. Really. Eat your leftovers. You're not making leftovers. You're pre-cooking for the next meal. You got to think of it that way. I don't ever think of it as leftovers. I think of it as I'm making a five pound roast, eight pound roast. And right there is probably five or six meals for us. I'll make the roast and then I'll make beef and noodles and then I'll make beef stew. Then I'll make beef fajitas. And then... Um, I will maybe make uh, beef, uh, uh, what's it called? Like beef uh, goulash type, you know, uh, like a beef goulash uh, or bean goulash is what I was trying to say. 
our bean goulash in dining on a dime cookbook. Oh, that's good too. It's yeah. really yummy. And so um, you're not just cooking for one, go ahead and send it over. You're not just cooking for one meal. You are pre-cooking for the next several meals. That is how I spend around 15 to 20 minutes. I don't even spend 30 minutes. I think spending 30 minutes cooking dinner is a really long time. I would never spend 30 minutes cooking dinner. It really is 15 to, to 20 minutes for me to cook dinner. And Kim says beef stroganoff. Yeah, I make beef stroganoff with it too. It's really oh, yes. super yummy. Um, and you mentioned uh, the roast, right? Yep. That slow cooked roast is awesome. And then when I, when there's leftover in there, I'll cut up some and I put it on a tortilla with some onions and um, other Mexican like things. I used to put cheese, but can't do that. So. Yeah. But it's awesome that way. It's really delicious. Darlene says, I just finished making German potato salad. All the great ingredients are pantry stable. Yes, our potato salad. Everyone raves over our potato salad. Man, I need to make some of that. Maybe I'll make that tonight. That sounds really good. <laughs> and listen, add, bake, add your leftover bacon grease to your potato salad when your potatoes are warm and melt a tablespoon or two of bacon grease in your potatoes. And oh my goodness, it is so delicious. It is so delicious. Marilyn says, I found chicken leg quarters for zero, zero cents a pound at family owned grocers. Okay. So I think she's missing a number there, but yes, chicken leg quarters are another way to save money. They're around 69 cents a pound where I am, but our viewers have said they've got them from 39 cents to 79 cents a pound. So they are super cheap and a, Really good way to save money in your grocery bill. Dining on a Dime cookbook, 35% off right now, guys. All our cookbooks, livingonadime.com for our Valentine's sale. But chicken leg quarters, maple glazed chicken, honey glazed chicken, roasted chicken. Those are really good recipes from our cookbook that you can use on those chicken leg quarters. And it's only about, oh, $5 for the whole meal. $5 for the whole meal, like two bucks. Two to two to three dollars just for the meat, and then the rest of the meal is just a couple of dollars. Um, let's see, Steve. Advertised sale? Do you look for unadvertised sale? Yes, I. We look for unadvertised sales all the time. Actually, that's one thing that I don't like with grocery pickup, is because I actually like going to the grocery store because I find all those clearance sales. Like my chicken that I got for $1.26 to $1.40 the other day at Walmart when it was marked down. I wouldn't have found that if I if um, I would have ordered online for pickup. And so I love pickup, but in delivery, grocery, you know, grocery delivery, I love both of those. But I I was finding that I was actually spending more money because I wasn't going into the grocery store looking for those extra deals. I'm not an impulse buyer. I know people say do pick up because it'll save you from impulse buying and all that, but I don't just impulse buy. When I buy things, it's because I either need it or want it. <laughs> I'm only kidding. No, I mean, it's because I need it or something that I had been wanting that I'd been looking for a good deal, waiting for a good deal or something, but I don't just go buy stuff just to buy stuff. Um, I've never been one of those people that just walks down the kitchen aisles and buys new mixing bowls. No, I have to actually need new mixing bowls to buy them. Um, Karen says, I'm learning what a want and need is and find that I don't buy just anything. Yes. Yep. I totally agree with you. BG says, I use flash food that is nearing expiring date for 50% off. Yes. Lots of variety and great stuff. Meat, veggies, bread. She is in Canada. Yes. Aloha. Ha. Do you bring a cooler for long drives? I do. I bring my thermos full of tea. I bring extra tea bags and I refill it at the gas station with hot water on the way. And then I bring a cooler with my lunch usually. Uh, sometimes I'll stop and, and pick up lunch, but since I'm on a, such a strict diet, I usually bring all of my food so that I don't have to worry about um, have, need, getting something to eat. I think she was also meaning, you might have already said this, <clears throat> but 
if you drive even your cooler, put the cold food in. Mm -hmm. Oh, you said that. Okay. Oh, one thing on that. <clears throat> one time I got Tara flowers and we used to work. I used to work two hours from home and I would drive back and forth. And uh, one day I stopped in the town to get her some flowers. And I had this lemon water in the car that I was always drinking on. And I brought the flowers out and I thought, what am I going to put them in so that they survive until, until I get home? So I stuck them in there. Well, lemon water kills flowers. So by the time we got home, they were, by the time I got home, they were completely dead. I thought, oh, so lesson learned. Don't put flowers in lemon water. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mike's tip of the day. There you go. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Cat Lover says, boneless, skinless chicken was on sale for $2.79. She went to get some in the freezer case. It was $2 a pound. Yes. Frozen versus fresh. Let me tell you, it always double and triple check different areas. Like one brand of frozen chicken, boneless, skinless chicken breasts may be cheaper than another brand. The Walmart brand may not be cheaper if the name brand is just marked down for clearance. So check those different ones and see. Life with Linda says, I got ground turkey on sale, cooked up to four pounds, had tacos, the nachos, the rest portioned out the freezer. Yes. In our Dining on a Dime volume two, we have one taco meat. Guys, 35% off right now for our Valentine's Day sale. We have one taco meat, and I can't remember if it's six or seven ways to make the one taco meat. And you can have all these different dinners that you can make with them. And then you've got it all made up. And if you freeze it in the little packets like I do in the freezer, then you don't have to worry about it. Here you go. Taco meat filling right here. And then you've got your taco salad, your taco basta bake, you've got your tostadas, your burritos, and I think there's one more, your enchiladas, seven layer taco, taco dip. You can use that one taco meat recipe right here. And you do not have to buy taco seasoning packets. Do you know, I have never ever once, ever, in my entire life ever bought a seasoning packet ever she hasn't the ones that i've had have been from friends moving and they were clearing out their cabinets i have never bought i don't have those i don't have those seasoning things why because our cookbook has all of those mixes in here and instead of spending a dollar on one of those little packets i spend five cents and make my own literally two minutes. And then I just put it in a spice bottle. And when I need it, I just scoop out what I need, just like you would normally. Nomi R says, how would you use up butternut squash? I grew a lot of it last fall and they're starting to go bad. Okay. So you could make it into soup. You could cut it up and fry it. My favorite way is just to bake it with some butter and brown sugar. That's how I like it. But if you need to be using it up and you don't feel like eating it right now and you want to save some for summer, then I would bake it up like you're going to ba yeah, just bake it, you know, cut it in half, turn it upside down, bake it, and then scoop out the inside, smash it up, put it in baggies, flatten them, stack them up in your freezer, and then you can add squash through next summer until it starts again, but you're not having to eat it all at once. I know I just finished my tomatoes and peppers about three weeks ago three well let's see it was the first for so four weeks ago i just finished my harvest of tomatoes i know i couldn't believe it karen says i made the homemade pancakes from dining on dine volume one and they were delicious thank you so much i am so glad you love them i think they're great she makes yep. them a lot we also have the baking mix in here that you can make for the pancake mix also if it make it ahead of time did I like, I can't remember, did I like the ones in the gluten-free book better, uh -huh. pancakes? Yeah, you did. <laughs> so if you have Dining One, it has yeah. the brownie yeah. recipe and the pancakes. I liked them better out of here. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just the texture of the gluten-free flour that he liked better, but yeah. I'm, I'm an interesting texture person, so there you go. <laughs> not going to go there. Yeah. Um, Karen. <laughs> Uh, or no, Millie, I had two piece chicken at KFC. It was eight, eight 34. Holy moly. 
I can guarantee you I will not be Where's going that? to KFC. She says she spent for two pieces of chicken eight thirty four. You know what's funny about that? That's ridiculous. These days, that's actually cheap if you're eating out. I noticed that it seems How like did you notice? In all the places that I've seen when I've seen that, well, I Just mean occasionally <laughs> we go somewhere. Yes. Um, yeah. It's like twelve dollars that people pay for their stuff. We, we always would get like the smallest thing that they had usually because, yeah. like, a lot of times you could get two little hamburgers for the same price as the big one with all the big meat and all that on it. And although now it's getting to where it doesn't really matter; it's yeah. still expensive. So next load. <laughs> Uh, Sue says, husband usually brown bags it, but didn't one day he stopped at Wendy's and $11 later, never again. I'm sorry. That would be a fasting day for him. <laughs> oh, $11. Yeah. Have mercy. That's crazy. Uh, wow. Dar post your questions in the comment section, guys, and I will try to get to them. Darlene, do you water glass eggs or freeze them? I don't do either. I'll be honest. I don't. I don't use that many eggs that I feel that I need to do it. I bought 60 eggs two or three weeks ago. I just went through 30 of them. Eggs is one thing I can and do eat. So I eat quite a few of them, actually. Well, two or three a day. I'm the only one who eats them. Right now, though, I'm not baking or anything because I don't have a kitchen. So um, I'm not baking anything. So it's basically just scrambled or fried eggs right now, but I really don't. But if I had excess, I would love to try water glassing them. I think that would be a pretty cool way to preserve them. And I would really be interested in trying that. What is water glassing them? You put them in water with, I think it's lime. I can't remember if I'm wrong, guys, go ahead and put it in there. Cause I can't remember for sure, but you put your eggs in with lime and it preserves them. And I guess I don't lime, know, like and, a year or something. Well, it's a really lime long is just time. chalk, basically, right? So there's nothing wrong with the lime. No. Mm -mm. Does it so, change the flavor? I wonder. I have no idea, guys. Let me know because I've never done it before. Julie, homemade dinners taste better than going out to eat. Yes, they do. That is for sure. Actually, I'm to the point now where I we go to two restaurants now because I'm tired of either one getting sick when I go out to eat for date night. We only go out about three times a month for date night, but. And we share one. And we usually. share a meal, <laughs> <clears throat> but we only go to two places because all the other places we've been to the amount of food you get for the price. I'm like, forget it. We have one particular Mexican restaurant. Oh my goodness. That are so delicious. How do you pronounce the name? La Heredura. It's good. If you speak Spanish, it means the, it's good. the horseshoe. <laughs> <laughs> and they love, oh, is that what it means? Yes. Oh. And they love us there and we love them. They, uh, they have the best food and you actually get a good amount of food for the price. I mean, you're not going in there and getting, you know, two little tacos for the, for the price. So anyway, yeah, Rebecca, rarely eat out, run reason. Like you said, the price, second reason is quality. I'd rather cook at home. Yes, I totally agree with you on that. Julie says, leftover chicken tenders are great on salads or in a burrito or a rice bowl, endless possibilities. Yes, that's pretty much what we do. I made all that chicken before our remodel started. And we've been using the chicken packets for all of those different things. I should make rice bowls. I haven't made that for a while. We could do that. Yum, those are delish. That would be a good thing to do. Ginger. When I, <laughs> I'm sorry, Ginger. Let me apologize to all you people who have this problem. When I am tempted by something that I don't really need, I now hear Tara's voice in my head saying, no, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Do you hear your wife uh, uh, saying that in your head? <laughs> I used to, but <laughs> now you got over it, huh? Now I just randomly wake up with tremors in the night. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we funny? <laughs> uh, <laughs> single guy, uh, or no, uh, Sandy, sorry. Do you have a good beef hash recipe? Yes. Dining on a Dime Cookbook, Volume 1. Love the hash recipe. That's another one we could make while we don't have a kitchen. I love the hash recipe. Uh Nancy was asking if the planner is 
available for ordering or out of stock? The planner is available for ordering. I have a, I have just a few left, but I'm headed down to Cheyenne to meet my printer from Colorado. He's driving up from Colorado and I'm driving down to Cheyenne and Goli and Farida Copy Co. love us so much. We love them. <laughs> but they're driving up from Fort Collins to Cheyenne to bring me uh, half of the plant planners. So I, I have some in stock sale. So we should be fine until I go get them Saturday. Undated, almost 400 pages. Don't worry. You can just start at the beginning and just work your way through. That's why I made it undated. So you can buy it all year long and just start wherever you're at. And yes, guys, I know I need to get that video done. And now I got paint all over my hands. I'm so mad. I was going to do it today and I started painting and I forgot. My fault. So anyway, Janet, how do you freeze cooked hamburger? So I've showed this many, many times, but it's super simple. You just throw your hamburger in a pan. Actually, I have 101 ways to save all groceries coming out pretty soon. A video on that. And it, this is going to be in there. But what you do is you just... Cook all your hamburger up, drain the fat off. I use the fold top baggies because they're cheaper than the zipper baggies. And I just portion it out into meal size portions. So usually about a pound of hamburger in each um, baggie, about a pound, give or take. I do have two teen boys, so they eat a little bit more. Um, and then I put all those in a big freezer bag and just pull out one packet as I need it. Super easy, saves me cooking dinner. This is one re This is one way I am able to get dinner on the table in 15 to 20 minutes. Most of my dinners are actually 10 to 15 minutes, but yeah. Uh, Ida says, just made brisket, got it for $2.99 a pound. Oh, that sounds so good. I love brisket. I, that's the only cooking appliance I don't have is a smoker and a really nice griddle grill thing. I think I would like to have those. Ooh, ooh, Maybe ooh. after the house is paid off, we might have to um, we might have to splurge and get us those two things. Maybe well, after the house is paid off and we get a car, we're we, we're getting to the point where we're gonna need a car pretty soon. <laughs> so after we do those two things, maybe we should splurge after those are done. That might be our treat. Uh, single guy, simple life says I made Italian style goulash that lasted four days. Yeah. It's okay to eat the same meal for a couple of days. I do. And I actually like it because the flavors taste better the next day, you know, a few days. Tessie says, hello everyone. I'm the proud owner of all three cookbooks in print and ebook. Wow. Wow. I love referencing the ebooks while shopping to take full advantage of the grocery sales. Thank you, Tara and Mike. Oh, that's thanks. a great idea. That's a good idea. Can you just take your phone in and look through yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. 35% off right now, guys, for our Valentine's sale. Yeah. I mean, she let's say she finds a meat on sale and she thinks, well, what can I cook with that? Oh, that's a great idea. That's I never actually, thought about that. I had never thought about that because I don't use digital products that much. That is a great way to do that. That is really good. All right. Um, Cynthia. I have chicken sell by tomorrow. Should I use it? Yes, definitely. Yeah. You can use it three or four days after the sell by date. If yes. you don't use it, just throw it in the freezer. Sell by is when it has to, when the store has to stop selling it, but it's still good. Yeah. A little bit longer after that. Probably how long after that? Three or four days yeah. after the sell by date. Yeah. So, I mean, or it, what I do is I bring it home, throw it in the freezer, and then I've got three or four days after it defrosts. But think about it. If you throw it in the freezer, if you throw it in the refrigerator frozen, the other day it was four days before my chicken was defrosted in the refrigerator. So I could have had it in a full week in the refrigerator and it would have been just fine. So, um, Naomi, what product are you using on your hair? Oh, I don't know. What Oops. product am I using? Thank you. I'm glad it looks nice. I... I have a whole conglomeration of stuff that I use, but it's not anything fancy. It's just stuff I got at Walmart, like mousse. So it's nothing really fancy. Just shampoo and mousse <laughs> conditioner. Yeah. So thank you, though. It does look really nice. Thank you. Um, I just didn't. I just let it dry naturally today. Oh, I mean, I have a perm in it, but I just let it dry so the perm was curly. Uh, leftover means no cooking that night and sometimes tastes better the second night. Yep, that's exactly. Sandy, I use bacon grease to make lice soap. Yep, I do too. 
Lowe says bacon on potatoes. Yes, that is super delicious. Becky says, I went out with my daughter and what I ordered, I ended up having lunch, supper, dinner, and dinner the next day, leftovers. Yeah. At this Mexican restaurant, if we each got a meal, it would be at least three meals for both of us, probably. And actually, it's surprised. Because we always have leftovers. You know, I guess we used to sometimes do this too, but I, um, <clears throat> I'm surprised how many people will get one of those plates. If it's your first time there, you have it. But in eat just to pick it at a little bit and then throw it away instead of taking the stuff home. Like we just realized I, I kind of always wanted to have my thing, but I realized, well, <clears throat> we share and we still have leftovers uh -huh. and yeah, I can't imagine yeah. how much bigger I would be if I was eating the little thing. So do we have the spiral fat bound edition of our dining on a dime cookbooks? Uh, no. So because we added pictures, it is just too large. It's almost 600 pages just for dining volume one. And it is just too large for a spiral. And it's just not physically possible for us to have a spiral note, spiral book. But what? I was going to say, show them that part. You said it aside, so I thought you were done. <laughs> but it does lay flat. So, and this is, a, this is a brand new book. I haven't used this book. So you can see it lays totally flat. Even at the beginning and the end pages. Yeah, even at the beginning and the end. This is a new, brand new book. Haven't ever used it. It lays flat. We have a special binding so that it will lay flat for you. Um, let's see. No, I'm very sorry. The undated planners are not on sale, guys. These are printed in the United States, and we don't have a huge markup on them, so uh, they are not on sale. Uh, Rebecca, I was going to try grocery pickup, but saw the quality of the produce that an associate was pulling said, now I'll do that myself. Yeah, a lot of people say that, but I've never had a problem. And it's no big deal. If you do, you can call the 800 number and they will give you a refund or you can take it back to the store. So, yeah. Um, I have an entire frozen chicken I have to find a way to use without an oven. We'll just throw it in your crock pot, instant pot. Put it in a pan of boiling water and just boil it for a couple of hours on simmering and you'll have really good chicken for uh, stewed chicken for chicken soups and stews and, and chicken salads. You can make it several ways without an oven. Walmart, Grandma and Danny Grandma. Walmart used to not charge you extra when they substitute the higher price items. Now they do. Yes, I have noticed that. And that's one reason why I don't like using the pickup as they do charge you. So now I just put no substitutions because I'm sorry. I'm not paying almost $4.75, $5 a box for real rice, for the rice checks versus the $2.38 on the cheapo Walmart brand. There's no way I'm paying that. That makes me so mad. I caught that once, and I or I didn't catch that once. I was really hacked. Didn't they also used to, maybe that was HEB I was thinking of. I know HEB did it, but didn't they also uh, used to, if it rang wrong, like give you yeah. lower price if it rang lower price or if it's a higher price they used it. to give it to you for free for if it free. rang the wrong price but now they don't and what we've noticed is ours well it might be as it getting better ours had a lot of wrong prices and people i saw somebody say I, I look at the app so i know if it's the right price the app price is not the same price it rings at the register sometimes and so yeah so some things, if I think this is one of those things that's probably going to be wrong, I'll snap a picture with the phone. I do that all so the time. So I can show them yeah. if it comes up wrong. Yeah. Anything that's marked down, like they had shrimp marked down the other day for really cheap. So I got a bunch because I love shrimp, but I don't ever, I don't buy it that often. And I took a picture of it because uh, it was on clearance and I was thinking it was going to be, um, it was going to be wrong. So it was like $3 a pound. It was really cheap. Um, uh, let's see. Sorry, guys, I got on, uh, on, um, I got off on there. Lost my place. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, okay. Let's see. Lake quarters are 38 cents a pound right now. Ida says, wow, that's great. Jen, we eat a lot of homegrown beef, but tonight's dinner tacos, I think came out six fifty. Tacos, rice, beans. We couldn't eat out Mexican food or cheap. Yeah. And we have a really good uh, Spanish rice recipe, volume one. 35% off right now for Valentine's Day, guys. And thank you, Darlene, for ordering the cookbook. 
Thank you so much. Single guy, simple life says, check out the after Valentine's Day clearance. Yep, we check every holiday. We do. We have a video coming up of mom's pantry. We did a tour of mom's pantry. So the next one. And um, she showed her chocolate stash, which is getting very low, she <gasps> says. Oh, no. I'm not sure her definition of low and my definition of low is the same thing. <laughs> But yes, we check the clearance for every holiday. Kathy says she put our planner on her wish list to give her family. Yeah, I'd make a great Mother's Day or birthday present. That would be wonderful. Uh, Leah says, love you guys. And Kimmy from Cheese in Her Apron too. She, she, we have helped her fall in love with cooking again. Yay! I will probably start doing more cooking type stuff when we get the new kitchen done. Um, I just finally decided on countertops yesterday and they are going to look so stinking cool. I'm excited actually. Actually it's coming along. Yeah. For a while we weren't seeing a lot of the change, but now we're starting to see the change again. I painted the kitchen today and, um, got all that done. The contractors had to plow snow. They also have a snow plowing business. And so they were out snow and plow today, or plowing snow today. So I, um, I painted the kitchen um, just so tomorrow they can hopefully be putting the cabinets in. <gasps> I mean, can you believe it? They might actually be putting the cabinets in tomorrow. <coughs> uh, Marilyn Moreau says, I don't think the taco seasoning packets taste good anyway. Yeah, I mean, I've only had the ones that my neighbors have given me. But yeah, I totally agree. I didn't. It's I mostly it cumin or tacos, usually mostly cumin, right? That's the thing you mostly taste in it. Garlic, well, cumin. chili powder, but onions. yeah. Oh, chili powder, yeah. Um, DL, does anyone know why we don't have the variety of soups to purchase like we used to? I know scratch soups are cheaper. However, it's handy to have a few unmade. I have no idea because we don't really buy that many. I mean, Mike bought some the other day, but we don't really buy them on a huge regular basis. Was it? So why is it there soups? Oh, yeah. um, Bandanagram, I make lower calorie mac and cheese by mixing it with butternut squash. Oh, that's a good idea. I never thought about that. Deanna, I like to make taco potatoes. Oh, that's a good idea too. My mom did that growing up. That would be really good. Just take a potato and slice it open in your taco meat and toppings. That would be really good. Yum. Teresa, did you already do a video on how you process the 100 avocados or did I miss it? Actually, no, that's coming up. My editor's working on it right now. And it's also going to be in my 101 Ways to Save on Groceries video coming up soon. Big Pond Homestead, what diet on your, are you on? Um, so I am um, gluten-free and dairy-free. That's why my former assistant finally convinced me to write the gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook because she kept getting so many questions about it. But I'm gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, taste-free. <laughs> uh, so I'm gluten-free, dairy-free, and sugar-free. And actually, I'm thinking about going back off of grains again. I felt really good. Went back on during Christmas. But now I'm thinking about going on again. My hands are, I'm getting arthritis, I think. Um, and so I'm, I'm thinking about trying to go grain free again, but things have been so crazy. It's like, but anyway, yeah. Tanya, don't you have chicken? Don't you have to have chickens to water glass them because of the store box eggs haven't been cleaned? I don't know, Tanya. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know much about water glass eggs. So maybe somebody can answer that question for you. Um, Leanne. Oh, yes. Water glassing works. And no, it doesn't change the flavor. Eggs must be unwashed and only a day old. Well, there you go. <laughs> I didn't mm -hmm. see the next question. So thank you, Leanne, for answering Tanya's question. <laughs> and Sue more. did also, if you're water glassing eggs, they must be farm fresh and unwashed. I should try that with the farm fresh eggs I got yesterday. He said that they were fresh that morning. We sold... We finally got us all of our appliances, old appliances sold, and I sold the double ovens. Sorry, Kimmy. And um, we let him take the dolly uh, that it was hooked up to a dolly to get it out of the garage. And we said, oh, just take the dolly and just bring it back. And he ever so kindly brought me a dozen eggs. 
when he brought the dolly back. So I got some gold right there. Uh, Wanda, I love Taco Bell. I need copycat recipes with the diarrhea or without. <laughs> it cracked me up some days. <laughs> That's pretty funny. You got to admit it. Uh, <laughs> one thing I would say on that is uh, we I had stopped going there for a while, but I I discovered that you can buy this sauce at the store, yeah. and I I at least find that if I make Mexican things, I make really good Mexican things anyway. But if I use the sauce, it it has it reminds me of that of the good part of that. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel says I have celiac and Crohn's and have to be gluten free. Gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook is what you need here. What's a day eating looking like for you? I bought the cookbooks. Um, okay, what's a day eating like? I'll have two eggs fried or scrambled on two pieces of gluten-free toast for breakfast. Then for lunch, I'll have tuna salad, chicken salad, or I'll have leftovers from the night before. Let's chicken and rice. And then I'll just have meat and potatoes and rice or... Um, I use gluten-free pasta. So like if we make spaghetti for the boys, I cook my pasta first and then I cook pasta for the boys. And we eat a lot of rice and potatoes. It's really not hard and it's not expensive at all to cook gluten-free. And my gluten-free, dairy-free sandwich bread is the best you will ever eat. It is so delicious and it's only $1.50 a loaf instead of $7 at the store. So... Kimberly, I love how the book teaches how to reimagine leftovers. I had leftover meatloaf and spaghetti with it. Turned out wonderful. Both volume one and volume two. Volume one has a specific leftover index because we added it afterwards. Volume two has the leftovers indexed in the index because it was a new book. But volume one and volume two both have all the uses for leftovers in the book. But you said one has an in, in with it. I thought that one has a separate leftover index. I said the one has a separate leftover. Oh. One has a separate index and two has its own. Gotcha. Or maybe it's all together. All right. She had leftover meatloaf and made spaghetti with it. Turned out wonderful. Yes, that is a really good idea. You could also use leftover meatloaf in like um, mom's stew or making a hamburger stew or something like that. Kimberly, because of how my husband's very strict of high protein diet, small portions, we just don't eat out anymore. My husband loves the home cooking now, saves money, tastes much better. Yeah. Uh, and Pennington, we always order a plate of appetizer nachos at our favorite Mexican restaurant and split it. Huge amount on the plate and so good, not to mention less expensive. Yeah. Um, would your books translate for Australia, i.e. measurements and ingredients? I mean, no, if you're metric, you'd have to just translate those for yourself. I'm, I'm curious um, what our <clears throat> what our other Australian friends in the audience might say if there's anybody watching right now well, how they, they use a, it. Yeah, they just have a calculator that they. So it is a calculator. Yeah. Because I figured they had to have some easy way to mm -hmm. easier way to do it. I mean, I would just if it was me, I would just keep a baking. I would just keep keep a chart on my door of my cabinet as I'm baking or whatever. But yeah. Uh, New Earth says Happy Valentine's Day. Oh. oh uh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got that done. Oh, what? Checklist. <laughs> now I bought you a Valentine's present yesterday. Ooh. It was very romantic for being married for 28 years. Oh. All right. <laughs> All right. Anybody can guess what I got Mike for Valentine's Day. I'll give you a $25 credit to our store. Nobody oh. will be able to guess. What I bought you for Valentine's Day, will they? <clears throat> That's because they don't hear me talk about it. <laughs> Amy, got 50 pounds of chicken quarters for 47 cents a pound. Notice the egg prices in my area are going down. Yes, I think they are finally starting to go down. I think their chickens are starting to come back again. So, I mean, it's been, it's been what, three months now? And usually it's about a three or four month cycle. So that makes sense. Leslie, I made a bean goulash, set it up with my hubby to hunting, and all the guys loved it. Bean goulash, dining on dime, volume one. It is the best. I think that was my sister-in-law's recipe that we put in there. It's it really so good. good. And I should make that. That's another thing we could make without the kitchen. Well, I used to hear the, yeah, I used to hear the name and think, oh, that doesn't sound very good or whatever. But, man, it's really good. Yep. Yeah. 
Let's see. So go back to the comments real quick. We've got guesses of Snoopy, chocolate, cowboy hat, chocolate syrup. Cowboy hat. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nope. None of those. Did we announce Mike's brilliant idea? Yep. Nope. I did not. We are waiting until we do the reveal. <laughs> you got Mike a truckload of windows. That would be Taurus. That would be five Valentine's <laughs> Yeah. Ooh, that would be wonderful. Um, <laughs> Snoopy cup for Valentine's. Nobody will ever be able to guesses. guess it. You're going to probably have to tell. I'm going to have to tell you guys because you're not going to guess it. Uh, <laughs> but it's so romantic. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Elaine, has anybody noticed gonna that there's... going to laugh about that when you hear it. That there's less generic choices at Walmart. I feel like they used to be a lot more. I have not noticed, but I will be honest. I have not done any major grocery shopping for more than six weeks now. Probably eight <laughs> weeks now, so... I had to have a frozen turkey. I couldn't resist during Thanksgiving. I think I'll do gumbo. Ooh, for Mardi Gras. That's a good idea. Yum. Okay. Send me the next questions while I look and see. Garlic, the DeWalt tool set, boxers. There are some good guesses. <laughs> Taco but... Bells. Actually, wow, you guys know us. <laughs> you guys know us pretty well. There are some. You? Whoops. Oops. <laughs> Taco I'm about Bell to post all that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You guys know us well. <laughs> oh my. Kathy made Sheila's hand the noodles, roasted chicken, Salisbury steak, honey mustard chicken sandwiches, slow cook roast from Cookbook Volume One her family loved all the recipes. Yay! That is great. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I keep thinking I want to cook through the whole both cookbooks. A lot of people are wondering if you if it was something about the deer. <laughs> Did I get you a speedo, honey? <laughs> oh, oh so <laughs> so the deer. Oh, we should have filmed the deer. All right. For all of you wanting to move to Wyoming. <laughs> listen up. So we had a dead deer in our front yard. And I called and they're like, okay, well, you can just haul it to the dump. I'm like, what do I do? Tie it to the top of my car? She called Fish and Wildlife because <laughs> we were told that's who we were supposed to call. So I was sitting here thinking, okay, that would be a great video. I think we should tie the deer to the top of the car and do a video on this one. But we were afraid we'd get stuck at the, at the, um, <laughs> we were afraid we'd get stuck at the dump. And so uh, we were like, what are we going to do? Because how, it, the, it's so muddy, I think we would get stuck at the dump. And, um, so we so our contractor said call sanitation. They're not from they're not from the United States. They're from South Africa. And so they said call sanitation. And we're like, okay, what do they mean by sanitation? Do they mean the sewer? Do they mean the water? Do they mean the trash? <laughs> we weren't the health department. So we we're trying to figure out which sanitation they were meaning. So who did you end up calling? The dump? <clears throat> I called the dump and just asked them, hey, is there is there some place in town that we should call if there's a dead deer in the yard and we need to see if, because I we'd heard somebody would take it away from the city. That's what I asked them. And, and they knew right away. So they well, said, actually, well, they sent somebody out. Yeah. you have to drag it to the road, but then the dump will come pick it up. The trash will come pick it up from the road. We're like, okay, well, is it frozen to the ground? Because it had thawed yesterday. And then we had this freak blizzard in the middle of the night. And I'm like, is the thing frozen to the ground? Are we going to even be able to get it up? I don't know. Is it just stuck there? So um, Mike got the shovel. Dave had to go to work. He was gone, so he couldn't help us. Jack was home from school, but he was really sick. So it was up to Mike and I. So we went and... It was not frozen to the ground, thankfully. And we had some plastic that we get on the books that they put on the books when we do it. And, um, and yeah, Leanne, you're not free. You're frugal. You didn't process it. So we don't know how <coughs> it died. We thought if, it died. Of if we would causes. have known it would have died from a car, I probably would have done that actually. Cause I hear deer jerky is really good. So I probably would have done that if I would have known how it had died, but there was a little bit of blood, like it had got maybe hurt, but it was just a tiny spot. So we don't know. Maybe it got hit by a car or something and then just roamed onto our property. But it died on the far end of our property, and we had to drag it on this tarp 
through the snow. I mean, the snow was like this deep, guys. And <laughs> through the snow, the way <laughs> all the way up the hill for the driveway to go dump it up the street. Yeah, we should have filmed that. So if you're thinking about moving to Wyoming, these are the kinds of things you got to deal with. <laughs> Yeah, it was a bonding experience for us, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. The main thing is we were we'd heard people talk about uh processing it or whatever, but we don't really know exactly we don't know how it died. And we didn't know how it died. Yeah. Yeah. We were concerned that if it was a disease of some sort, that could be a problem. Yeah. All right. So send me the next questions while Mike sent me a question. Nobody guessed what I got you for Valentine's (laughs) Day. JG says, Oh boy, that's the most Wyoming thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, you guys want to know what? How far did you get through? Oh, you didn't get the new one there, did you? Oh, this one. Okay. Uh, you guys want to know sh- what? Should I make them wait to tell you what I got you for Valentine's Day? I think I'm going to make them. Wait. <laughs> Marilyn says, "Look at it as your baptism by fire." <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, Kimberly, my sister's stove broke years ago, and she had to cook on just a hot plate. Yep. I asked if she was ever going to replace her stove, and she said, no, actually, it hasn't been that bad. Our hot plate isn't that great, and so it takes a really long time to heat up, like really long time to heat up. But it's really not been too bad between the toaster oven, the air fryer, and the hot plate. I've actually been cooking Basically the same meals. It's not too bad. The main thing is because it's on a different floor than the rest of the house. I would say that's yeah. been a little bit, but not really too bad. Well, it's, you it, just burn it off. I mean, it's you way better than what we would have done otherwise. And yeah, it's nice that it's an actual mostly kitchen. Yeah. Sue <laughs> just bought our cookbooks for $20.35 per cent off for a Valentine's sale. Thank you so much, Sue, for buying our cookbooks. Living on a, excuse me, living on a dime.com. Tanya, I can't wait to see your new kitchen. Thank you, Darlene. When's the production? So uh, the new window is supposed to be here March 1st. So it probably won't be any sooner. I, well, I know it won't be any sooner than that. And so that will, um, it'll probably, I will say the second or third week of March is probably when it's going to be done. We have not even ordered the refrigerator yet. I'm waiting another week for president's day to see if they have a president's day sale, but I've been waiting for six weeks and the refrigerator hasn't gone on sale. So the refrigerators may not go on sale. So I have a dishwasher. Let's just put a box outside for a while. I have a dishwasher in the stove ordered, but I can't do a reveal without a refrigerator. That would just look weird. We could we could get a refrigerator box and paint it white, paint little handles on it and stuff. How about we have you guys move the refrigerator from downstairs upstairs? Uh, no. <laughs> nope. 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 CJ, I bought all three of your books. I absolutely love them. Thank you so much. Although I haven't made anything from the gluten free yet, I haven't had it long. You are a real inspiration. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You are a real inspiration. Natalie, will the contractors be putting the new appliances, possibly put your studio stove where it needs to be? Yes, they are. I mean, we'll just install the appliances. There's nothing to, to do to install those. But yeah. And yes, he did say he can hook this up for me. Oh. I just had a sad moment thinking of something. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> Wanda, if I buy a big bag of leg quarters, I have to sit outside to use on my patio tape root table to separate them. Yeah, I mean, you can. That's a good way to do it. Robin, I had a scary dream that I had to wash my worship flags and that Jill was going to add something to what I was using to wash them. She said was at the laundromat. Okay, that it sounds very strange. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, Dina, I have a problem at Walmart all the time. Shelf says one price, app says different, scans different. Yeah, I always take a picture of the shelf if I even come close to thinking it's not going to be right. What kind of oven is that in the background? It is a 1950s. I thought it's a KitchenAid. Hot Point. Hot Point. Ah, I remember I got it for 50 bucks. Do they still make Hot Point? I don't know. Hmm. I remember I seeing a lot of them when we were kids, way back in the dark ages. <laughs> yeah. Way back um, before the internet. Yeah. 
when I was a kid, we had to get up and walk over and turn up the volume on the TV. <laughs> Leanne, what grains do you eat? I'm gluten free and eat millet, amaranth, rice, and sorghum. I use I eat millet, rice, millet and rice are my two big ones. Carolyn, my husband uses butternut squash in place of pumpkin in pumpkin bread. Oh, that would probably be really good. I could see how that would taste really good. Um, Leanne, I love to go into my fridge every four days or so and evaluate what needs to be cooked right away. Yep, that's why I don't do meal plans. I just cook what needs to be eaten up first and just go from there. Uh, Beverly, we do like our double ovens. Great for the holidays. Yeah. I mean, I used my double ovens twice, I think, in the 18 months we've had this house. So I was like, forget it. It's not, for me, it's not worth the hassle. We don't entertain like a lot of people do. <laughs> so. Uh, Christy, we had loaded potatoes for dinner, tacos last night. So we used leftover meat and toppings the next night for the baked potatoes. Very good. Yes. Heather, any pointers for cheap hydroponics? Go ahead. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I'm a huge gardener, but my big thing would be to say, it depends on how you're growing, but you can do stuff. I mean, go to the re go to the restore, go to salvage yard, whatever, get stuff like gutters. You could grow your lettuce and those kinds of things in gutters. You could get uh, stock tanks, stuff like that for your water filtration recycling system. Like I got a stock tank for $20 last year to garage sale. So, I mean, there's all kinds of ways you could save for hydroponics. It just depends on what kind of a system you're having, how big of a system you're going to have, where your system's located, you know, for what you're going to need. So that's kind of a vague question I can't really answer because um, I don't know what you're wanting to put in or anything. So Kathy, oh yeah, I read that one. Natural Woman, you got Mike a leather bomber jacket. Oh, honey. <laughs> Whoa. With the Speedo combination. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh -oh. Pictures they don't need in their head, huh? <laughs> Sorry about that. Sarah, maybe <clears throat> perfume, a fancy garlic shaker. You got him studied tires. <laughs> wow. You guys yeah, listen some to of us, those. don't you? Uh, Denise says they're out of bread and tortillas. Wow. That's strange. Life insurance. <laughs> I think it means life, rope. life insurance for Tara. Uh, so uh, oh, life insurance for she me. She was listening yesterday. A four by four pickup. Wow. Did you call the D D and R and ask them what to do? Or find someone that had a lot of property to take it. Place for eagles and such. Ugh, gross. I mean, yeah, I could see that, but no, we didn't do that. Uh, don't get Samsung appliances. No, that's one thing in our appliance video. They said do not buy Samsung. He said, just stay away from Samsung, everything. So I'll give you that little cheat sheet there. DL, now you have a great story to chat with locals at the coffee shop. Yep. How are you doing paying off our mortgage? So we are past the 50% mark. Are we at 60% now? Almost 60, Something almost like 60%, that, yeah. almost 60%. We're getting gloves. We're I was so kind excited. of hoping for June. I, I was projecting between June and December, but really pushing for June. And then we had to buy new planners and new gluten-free books. So it may be delayed. I'm thinking April. I would be great with April. Diane, I'm cookbook 35% <laughs> off for our Valentine's Day sale for our pay off our house sale, 35% off. Our <laughs> debt is your gain <laughs> <laughs> right now. Uh, about the oven, Sandy, $50. That's great. Yeah. Actually, I really wanted to put this in my new kitchen. I really wanted to, but I don't think it's big enough to put my turkey roaster or my cookie sheet in here. I don't actually... I just had an idea. Uh-oh. You can I, see that she got disrupted in the middle of her speaking. I should bring my turkey roaster and my cookie sheet out here and actually measure them and see I did not do that. And then the new oven we just bought could go for mom's house if she moves. 
But then if I put this in the new kitchen, this is wider than the oven I did. So now my cabinet placement would be off. Well, I don't, I don't really think you'd want to cook on this regularly because it's not glass top. Do you remember how much there, we used to fight with cleaning in all those burner pans all the time? I know, but it's so cool. <laughs> I think I would give up my glass top. I don't know. Would you guys give up the glass top just because it's cool factor? I mean, look at that thing. <laughs> if you had to look at that every day and just think, now that's just cool. It is cool, but I have to remember the old days. <laughs> and I bet Pistol would be able to get it all fixed for us. Our appliance guy <laughs> that we found out goes to our church and is our neighbor and we didn't know it. I don't know. I don't know. What are they, what are they saying? Oh, we'll read that Do, one. My mother had a Gibson from the 50s and she always used that stove no matter where she lived. Uh, where we lived. I, mm. wasn't, I, would keep I love glass my top. glass top. I really do love my glass top. Yeah, when so, we had the burner pans... I think wasn't like cleaning them more often, or were you cleaning them too? No, I cleaned them a lot. We take the burners yeah. out, we take all the pans out. We had to do it like very frequently. It was not uncommon for us to boil something over. I what know it's hard to believe. I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> for those of you who've seen us cook, <laughs> what if I could get? Can you get silicone liner burner pan? Let's just look and see, shall we? Amazon. Silicone. There are a few people burner. that say Michaela says I'd give up the glass top in a heartbeat. <gasps> oh, oh, they have silicone liners. Whoa. I don't know, guys. What do you think? I already changed a major thing for Mike's brilliant idea yesterday. They're going to kill me if we have to totally rearrange all the kitchen cabinets because I put the old stove in instead of the new one. I just don't think you're going to like it. I remember how we were before. But then I'd have to change all the countertops too. So if I didn't like it, I'd have to put in all new countertops. Is it worth the risk for $500 for that countertop section? <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty cool. I think it's cool, but I think it'd be better to put it in the studio or something. <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm having my doubts. Hmm. I don't know. Okay. Does the oven still work? So I don't know. <laughs> but the lady I bought it from said that they had just used it for Thanksgiving before, right before I bought it. So, um, Josephine, I have no idea what your question means. I'm sorry. She says, I mean, your brownie, it, asked for six cups of what six cups oh uh, well i was i didn't see the first i looked and i didn't see the first question but i, I got that to see if we look at that recipe and it looks like there's some kind of problem with it. okay so next batch of questions go ahead and send them to me so the one you just deleted was that six i think it was like eight no i think i think six is the highest one i sent um <clears throat> Six. Sorry. Eight was from last night. This is the... While we're waiting on that, um... Still gathering more, but there you go. All right. What did I paint? So I painted um, the kitchen today. Somebody asked, and, and I forgot to answer that question. Sorry about that. Okay. Next set here. Whoops. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Will flour tortillas stick in a stainless steel pan? I don't think so. They have so much fat in them. I don't think they would stick. I don't know. That's a good question. I'm not sure. Anybody made tortillas on stainless steel pan? Because I don't know on that one. And one of my favorite recipes in the volume one cookbook is the banana bread. Oh my goodness. It is so good. And so is the gluten-free dairy edition. And our banana bread is so good that we have two recipes that we put the same recipe in there. But... I have, I think, 13 variations in volume two 
for our banana bread and it's not just chocolate chips it's some really good ones like cranberry and coconut oh my goodness so delicious our our oh man that's the one thing i miss going sugar free is i love my banana bread and my zucchini bread and stuff like that i do really miss that most people are saying that you should keep the new stove and use this like as a decoration or, or in the studio or something. Now, are you guys really saying that or is he editing the comments? That's what I want to know. You'll have to read it after the fact. I don't trust you to not edit the comments. You know why this thing is super stinking heavy and he doesn't want to move it. I don't blame you either. <laughs> it's really heavy. Space Girl wants to know if you got me a set of camo golf clubs. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. I'll tell you just a minute. Okay. I'll get through these questions and I'll tell you guys. I was going to, well, I was going to say though, <clears throat> here in, in Sheridan, they actually have polo. Yeah. <laughs> I've never played polo, but I thought it was kind of interesting. That One I, of the first American polo clubs started here in Sheridan. A small city yeah. <laughs> in the West, in the middle of yeah. nowhere has polo. <laughs> Susan says, you had inspired me to remodel my kitchen while we were doing the other house renovations. I was nervous about double wall ovens based on what you said, but went ahead anyways. I love them. Good. Well, that's great. So your ovens are probably just different than mine. It was probably just the brand. I just don't like convection fans running all the time. So that's for me. Nancy talked about being ancient. One of my kids, when they were little, asked me if I was, if I'd ever met Abraham Lincoln. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's funny. Um, Glenda, okay. Um, Glenda, I made potato bowls for dinner. Didn't think about it until I washed you. Yum. That's a really good idea. I might have to make that for one meal. That sounds really good. Mom, Stu, just popping in to say hello. Hello. I really hello. get a chance to watch you guys live. Love your channel and love your Diane Dive cookbooks, volume one and two. Thank you so much. I've been following you since Not Just Beans, which is the original name of Dining on a Dive volume one. Thank you so much. Um, you've been with us a really long time, <laughs> a really long time. Uh, okay. Jill wants to move. Like, so she must've said something because four or five I must people have. asked about it. Okay. So I will let mom tell that story. I'll just say there's a neighbor issue. So on top of not becoming one with her house, but Anyway, we'll discuss it later. Okay, got through those comments. Send me the next comments, and I will tell you guys what I'm getting Mike for Valentine's Day. <laughs> what I got Mike for Valentine's Day. Are you ready? Nobody got the $25 gift card, but thank you for guessing anyway. You think they're curious? You're going to have to tell them. I'm not going to say it. So I was at Home Depot <clears throat> yesterday getting paint for the kitchen, and they had this gigantic, this big, kneeling pad <laughs> so i got him that for valentine's day he hurt his knee and so he's moaning and whining every time he bends down and does anything and i'm like here get this <laughs> for valentine's day <laughs> no it's super thick cushy i was worried for oh, you oh thank you yeah oh how sweet is that yeah i um yeah i we have I've kneeled on some other things uh, in the summer when we were out on the asphalt and trying to put together raised beds and stuff. And I thought, oh, this is nice. Well, the new one, wow, it's huge. This should be awesome. It's really thick and cushy. She um, loves me. I do. Okay, sorry, guys. That was the contractors. Okay. Uh Rachel, would love to have put the roaster cookie sheet straight in back to front. Yes. That's what I was thinking on that thing is what I'd have to do. Um, Meg, you have to take the whole thing apart and clean it practically every time you cook it. That's true because I always boil stuff over. Robin, do you ever have fin for yourself night for dinner? Yes. Many times a week. Six or eight times a week. What's that? <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? I'm only kidding. Fend yourself night. Oh, <laughs> Depends on how many Actually, live shows we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> when it's the live shows, usually it's fend for yourself because... Because she goes straight into the tub and yeah. says, I'm dying. <laughs> I'm done. I'm going to have to go paint tonight, though, but a little bit more. But, yeah. 
Wow. Um, Anne says she's afraid to use an electric stove. Why would you be afraid to use an electric stove? I've never, well, I had a guest stove in <laughs> Estes, I guess. <laughs> and then I grandma know. says she thought she thinks you get it so that I could kneel before the queen mother. <laughs> So if you weren't here on yesterday's show, we were talking about we're not, no announcements. This no isn't announcement. any kind of thing. We don't. There's like it has nothing to do nothing with our children anywhere in the foreseeable future. We were talking but, about what our contractors' grandkids call them because they're from South so Africa. Tara's like, so. I wonder if we had grandkids. What would we call? What would we have them? And Tara's Tara was looking for what she would want them to call her. <laughs> Yesterday there was a joke about somebody saying you should be queen mother. Yeah. Tammy says she just ordered volume one, Dining on a Dime cookbook at 35% off right now. Livingonadime.com does a tell how to make laundry detergent. Actually, that recipe is in volume two. Hi. Sorry. But you can get it off our website also. Livingonadime.com. The recipe is on our website. Tara, Christine says stick with your plans. Oh, if I did that, believe me, I would not. I... I have not stuck with my plans at all this entire thing. I have changed the paint color in the kitchen like 20 times. I've changed the tile, not tile, like six or eight times. Still have not decided on a floor yet. Mike's brilliant idea, we decided literally, it was like, what, the night before they showed up at our house to start tearing apart. And when you see his brilliant idea, you will understand why this was like major. It's like major. He's, it's not just a brilliant idea. It's like a major brilliant idea. And so it wasn't just a little change. You guys are going to be shocked. But anyway, I can't. There's no way I can stay with my plants. As a matter of fact, just last night, we're getting the countertops like in two days, I think. Just last night, I figured out what I'm doing for countertops after going back and forth. So unfortunately, sticking with my plans doesn't work for me so what okay plans? <laughs> yeah that's me no plans for me okay next set of questions wait did you get eight already i did wow. mike is a total major big idea kind of guy yes <laughs> um kathy says my birthday is at the end of the month and i need to drop some hints that i want one of your cookbooks ah that's a great idea. Tell them they can get it on sale this week. There you go. <laughs> Save you some money. Ohio says that's the same kneeling pad I have. It is the best thing for my back problems. Yeah. I think you'll probably use it a lot, actually. It's not very romantic, but, you know, hey. <laughs> I, I had We've a, been married 28 years. How much romance do you have? In college, I, I had a... Uh, <clears throat> Medieval history, France in the Middle Ages was a class. And it was actually about like from the three or four hundreds until the until just before the um, Renaissance. And and one day the teacher was she deflated all the college students. She said, you know, in the Middle Ages, everyone says how much you want to be knights in shining armor and princesses and whatever else. And she said, in the Middle Ages, it would show that you really loved your spouse if you were willing to pick their lives. Oh, would you pick my lice, honey? We will never know. <laughs> well, although I have done other things to show, whoops, lots of no's. Lots Band of no's. I say keep the glass, you love it, and leave the deal arranged in the studio. Wow. Wow, Facebook is almost 100% no's. I think you're editing the content. <laughs> Donna, don't second guess your voices. Sue has let it go with the musical notes. <laughs> Actually, guys, if I didn't second guess my choices, I would, I would be dead. I like second guess every single thing because everything is like a major decision to me. I hate making decisions. I get so tired of making decisions all the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a membership to Planet Fitness. I probably could use it, although I we, I go to the Y. Echoing says, you said buying in bulk food doesn't save money, but diet, buying non-food items save things like paper towels. Uh, no, because you shouldn't be using paper towels. <laughs> so mom and I, I mean, I literally use less than one roll of paper towels a year. I really do. Mom maybe uses a roll of paper towels every two years. But 
stop using things like paper towels and use rags instead. Now, I guess if you have to use, I don't, the only reason you would have to use them, I could see is maybe cleaning up cat barf and medical reasons. I could see having to use paper towels for that, but. Um, we didn't check though on things like tires and stuff people say, but we've never tried that. Tires. People say you go to she's just warehouse stores, right? Or no, she's bulk. just talking about buying in bulk. Oh, I was thinking you meant like warehouse stores. No, you yeah. don't buy tires in bulk. We don't buy tires in bulk. No, I was thinking in bulk. <laughs> but, buy 500 like, tires, what please. are you talking about? But, I mean, if it's cheaper, if it's a dollar a roll instead of $3 a roll, then I guess if you use them a lot, you know, like, I mean, some people have businesses and they have to use paper towels, then I could see, yeah, it might pay for that. You just have to figure and see what the cost is. Sally, uh... A modern stove is so much easier than my old one. You don't want to regularly cook with it and clean an old stove. Well, true. True. Kathy, the ebooks aren't on sale right now. Sorry. Glenda. Lala, LOL, you are too funny, Tara. What did I say? <laughs> Everybody sure. says that. And I'm like, okay, what did we say? Um, is You're it a, trick a little somewhere? funny, Tara? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never call her Tara. That probably freaked her out. <laughs> Do not call me Tara. Uh, sorry. <laughs> how many times have you, you noticed called, I never call her have, Tara? How many times have you called me Tara since we've been married? Like once. Well, sometimes if you say Mike, <laughs> then I'll say Tara. <laughs> Drives her crazy, so I don't do it very often. <laughs> Usually oh, I'm not standing too close. Okay, here's another question. Does anybody know what Mike calls me? <gasps> what do I call you? We'll see if anybody knows what anybody calls me. Um, I thought you cleaned paper toilet with paper towels. I do, but I still, I use one paper towel to clean the toilet. You clean toilets with paper towels? Oh, I thought you, yeah, okay. Well, the rim and stuff. And I use one paper towel, so... I use one paper towel basically in the bathroom. I clean the mirror with it and then I take it over and I use it on the toilet. I use one to two paper towels every time I clean. I clean once, twice a week, just depends. But I don't, uh, how many paper towels are on a roll? I don't even know, let's see. Walmart, so if I go to Walmart and I type in paper towels, how many sheets? I don't even know how many sheets are on a paper towel roll. That's pretty pathetic. Okay, so right here, Brawny. Who? What? What kind of paper towel should I look at? Brawny, I guess. I don't know. That's the first one that comes up. Brawny has. Wait, what? Six rolls. A hundred and twenty two ply sheets. And so, yeah, I mean, and that's my roll of paper towels for a year. I really, that's, that's all I use paper towels for is cleaning the bathroom. Maybe, I mean, I'll use it now and then maybe for something, but very, very rarely. I don't even drain bacon on paper towels anymore. So, Yeah. Okay, uh, any more comments or questions? There are more, but Siobhan says, I, um, Rachel Rogers said kneeling pad. So oh, she did? <laughs> did she really say that? I, I didn't see, but we were, I was in the middle oh, of the Oh, well, I'll go back staff. and look. If you actually said that, I'll give you $25. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so let's see. Does What does, it, let's see. Does anybody, while well, you're getting the rest, do you, do you call me, you do call me honey. You do call me that, but that's not what you normally call me on it. Dear. Sometimes. Dar you mean it's not queen? <laughs> Your uh, Mrs. Is. Kellum. <laughs> <laughs> Boss lady. Oh, and queen, of course. Uh, wow. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> I'll get to your weevil question in just a second. Um, hmm. Let's see. Oh, that's funny. Deer. So he does call me deer a lot, but actually what Mike calls me is. What do you call I'm me? I'm waiting. <laughs> I call her Tara Jean. 
because she told me, yeah. <clears throat> well, she told me when we were dating, I always wanted someone to call me Tara Jean, but nobody will ever call me Tara Jean. They just say Tara. And I really wish somebody would call me Tara Jean. I was like, oh, well, I could do that. Have you always called me Tara Jean? Actually, what's funny, though, is uh, his her grandfather used to call his wife, Grandma. He called her, he didn't call her Grandma. <laughs> he called her Berna Jean. So it was kind of funny sometimes to hear him. He didn't do it that often, but when he did, I always thought, oh, yeah, that's right. You do have the same middle name. Yeah. <laughs> um, she's in her apron said, I hear him. Or she's in her apron. Kimmy at She's in her apron said, I hear him say dear a lot. I do say dear. Yeah, he does call me dear a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you do call me dear. But if he's actually calling me for something, he says charging. Yeah. Uh, Tesh, Tashi, uh, Tisha, maybe? Oh, Kellum. Huh, that's funny. Uh, help, wheel bugs broke out in my pantry and my husband freaked out. What are your options? I live in Texas. Oh, man, you got a mess. So you're pretty much going to have to throw out everything that's not sealed. All of your grains, your cereals, your rice, pretty much anything that's not in the can, you're going to have to throw out. Lysol in the brown, in the brown container. Concentrate. Lysol concentrate in the brown container. Wipe down all of your cabinets full strength. Full strength. And then um, you're just going to have to go and start over again. You really can't. I mean, you can eat weevils. Aren't going to kill you. It's just more protein. They used to eat them in the old days all the time. But kind of gross. So um, we don't do that now. But yeah. So echoing. I'm wondering if buying toilet paper and other household items in bulk is better than a few pack at places like Dollar Tree. I don't know. I don't. I don't price it anymore. We did our great toilet paper test of 2018 or 19, 20, was it 2018 or 19 when we did that video? And I figured out which toilet paper was the cheapest and that's the one I just kept buying. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we need to go get a screenshot to see if Rachel said that. It, Rachel, if you said that, well, she email says, me at it's her said, living on a dime. I mentioned it after you revealed the secret gift. Oh, after. Oh, okay. Uh, this is not mom's house. This is our studio. So, um, yeah, yeah. Tara's not going to take the stuff out of. Well, we did take a refrigerator out of Jill's house that she absolutely hated. And we well, gave yeah, her, but you got a new one. Yeah, but she got a new one. So, yeah. How do you limit your sugar intake? Well, you just stop eating sugar. I just stopped all honey, all sugar, no artificial anything. I'm telling you, they say, oh, my sugar cravings go away. They lie. It's not true. But, you know, my hands hurt and I'm dropping things. So if I don't want to be doing that, then I need to stop. I think it's touche. So sorry about that. <laughs> Sandy, I got my Bible today. Thank you. You're welcome. I am so glad the bookmarks are from our friend uh, Cherry. She made those for you guys. So I hope you enjoy them. Um, Nancy's ordering our cookbook. Yay. Thank you so much. Did you get Mike a horse to play polo? <laughs> You guys don't know me well enough. Nope, we're too cheap to do that until the house is paid off. Jay Stratton, paper Whoa. towels are my addiction. I would love to see how people live without them. We just have rags. We just use wash rags and towels in the kitchen. I change it out every day. I get a fresh dish towel and fresh rag, wash rag every day. Everybody says, oh, I don't need all that laundry. Guys, it's like this much laundry, really. Seven wash rags and seven towels are nothing for the laundry. And then... Um, so like 95% of my cleaning is done with that. And what do I mean? So my entire kitchen is cleaned with the wash rag and towel. And then um, if something falls on the floor, then I'll use the wash rag to clean it up and put that straight in the laundry and get a fresh one for the dishes. Then the bathroom, like I said, I use one paper towel to clean the mirror and sink and then the then I'll go over and clean it with the toilet. 
that's all I do. I mean, I don't know what else you would use paper towels for, but that's what we do. So, all right. Um, did you send me more questions? Oops. Is it okay to put flour in the freezer? Yeah. And most people recommend it if you live in a place that has bugs because it kills the weevil eggs and all of that so that it's not quite um, so bad. <clears throat> Someone said she doesn't have weevils and she's wondering if it's a regional thing and it is regional, right? Yeah, we don't have them here. Doesn't there have to Wyoming. be humidity or something in the area or? Yeah, it's places with high humidity and high rainfall seem and to be heat. the biggest and heat, the biggest problem. But here in Wyoming, we really don't have that many bugs. We have box elder <clears> bugs <throat> for about three weeks in September, but no self-respecting bug would handle forty-seven below zero. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> I did send that to you. Okay. Although we can stop if you're. Um, okay, so just a second. Wait for Except it Cheryl says, I use old baby burp cloths for kitchen towels. We've used them for like the nice rags. For We still have some, don't yeah. we? Yeah, mm -hmm. I still have some. Wow. Even from BJ. Wow. Um, <laughs> I know a wife that <laughs> called my, I know a man who called his wife my old lady. They're divorced now. Yeah. Renee's husband calls her his bride. Oh. J JG says, normal day in Wyoming, dragging a frozen deer out of your property. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, I didn't tell Mike. There's also a frozen bear back there. No. <laughs> Yesterday when I was coming home, I turned the corner into our driveway. We almost was putting up a new fence. Yeah. I was sliding down the driveway and I had no control. You mean, and I was you like, mean on the curve? Oh my goodness, am I going to take out the fence? Yeah. I was scared. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you have a long way down if you went through the fence. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Bandana Grandma says, I thought it was cute when my grandpa called me Wendy as a nickname. Years later, mom told me he was calling me Wendy because I never shut up. <laughs> That's Aww. funny. My grandpa called all girls Amy. Every girl is Amy. Because he yeah. I couldn't ever remember anybody's name, so he just called them all Amy. Um, did you not get it? Oh, you did get it. Oh, wow. Sharon's in Australia. So what would the time be in Australia right now? Is it like really late time in I'm Australia? guessing 10 a.m. Let's see. 12, oh, 12 p.m. That was close. two hours off. Well, That's it depends close. on what part of Australia, actually. Oh, yeah. So they have one, two, three, four time zones, it looks like. Huh. Wow. Oh, see? Somewhere between Adelaide and Perth is is my guess. So I did I did guess on the right <laughs> continent anyway. <laughs> Uh, so what toilet paper is the cheapest? Go watch the video. Oh, it's the Walmart Great Value brand. Of uh, the Charmin type Ultra Soft is the cheapest one. We did the great toilet paper test of 20, of, of 20, what, 19, 18, 2018, 2019, 2018, I think. And, uh, we tested the cheap. Everybody says it's so cheap. Scott Tissue. And we proved our friends Aldermans and Alderman Farms wrong that, sh that Scott Tissue is actually cheaper. So when we went to go see him, he brought a Scott Tissue at the, at the <laughs> airport. You know, people hold up a sign. He had the Scott Tissue. So we would recognize him. Actually, I bet he still has that video on the Alderman Farms uh, YouTube channel. It's so, pretty funny. Yeah. But yeah, it's the... When you go, when the cost per wipe, you have to figure the cost per wipe, not the cost per sheet. Because the cheap stuff uses more sheets per versus the expensive stuff. So maybe we should do the great toilet paper test of 2023. Man, has it been five years since we did that? <gasps> it's been five years since we did that. It was in February when we did that. Time flies when you're having fun. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. We should go look at the date. It was like somewhere right around this time when we did that test. Hmm. <laughs> wow. Have we tried monk fruit? Uh, I tried it for my tea and it tastes really good. So I do, I do like that. 
Howdy from Northern Wisconsin. Jewel, thank you. She loves us. She loves us. Thank you. Yes. Oh, thank you. All right. Send me the next ones. I'll look over here and see if there's any while you're sending them to me. Do you recommend clothes ringers? Uh, if you're doing laundry by hand, I do. But I wouldn't recommend doing laundry by hand. You can go check out Mom and I's video on when we did laundry by hand. Woo. That was fun. Not really. Um, uh, let's see. All right. <laughs> Laura says that's some favorite, my favorite video you ever did. <laughs> was it Mike's reaction? I'm curious. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, we. Uh, you even talked about the books in a little bit. Just realized. Update toilet paper pricing. Yeah, I should do that again. Um, okay, Dining on a Dime cookbook. 35% off right now, guys. Valentine's sale. Put your questions in real quick. 35% off for our Valentine's sale. Little quick commercial, including our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook. Laura, it's so good to see you. How are you? How are you? How are you, Laura? Laura Richards, she's been with us forever. Yes. When will the appliance video come out? Uh, probably a couple of weeks. My editor, it's in the queue for my editor right now. So he's working on that. Um, let me grab the question. Laura here. says I laugh so hard I cry every time. Wow, you've watched it again. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I think we need to redo the toilet paper test. That That's was That's probably fun. a good idea. I don't know. I don't know if I could outdo myself on that one. <laughs> oh, no. You're going to make it more disgusting on me. <laughs> you have to watch it if you haven't seen it yet. Has anyone heard of Jackie Kennedy dress casserole? I have not. She said she made it today. But I can't eat it, but it sounds delicious. Okay. <laughs> I have not heard of it. I don't know what it is. Uh, Jewel says she washes out and reuses her Ziploc bags. Yep, we do too. Remember to downslift shift when sliding. Really? I think that's, but I've I never think heard that before. I was wondering if that's in a standard transmission. I don't think, that would, I don't think well, that would help you sliding. It would only. How would that help you sliding? I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, I've never heard that before. So that's a new one on me. We do have a corner that gets no sun. And is that where you slid? It ices because it gets no sun. And I find myself frequently going out there and trying to. Take care of that. But. Mm. Beverly says she makes egg noodles, butter, sour cream, cottage cheese, and chives. Ooh, that would be really delicious. Yum. Frosty Gal, please let everyone know that your Bible videos have changed my life in the best way. Thank you from Out Little Family in Oregon. Well, you're welcome. I am so glad you enjoyed them. Deborah, a friend of mine is interested in Native American religion instead of Christianity. What do I say to her? Cut uh, that out. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. What does she say to her, dear? Uh, I, uh, well, I mean, I guess it would depend on, <clears throat> uh, I would just say depends on your relationship with her, but, uh, if she, if she thought she was a Christian before, then I'm not really sure what I would do in that situation, to be honest. I mean, I would tell her the truth and, um, some people just want to do that stuff or look into other things that are not right. But if, if you have a discussion with her and she wants to know why, why Christianity is right, then I would tell her that the Bible um, is the only book that's had prophecies made thousands of years ago. And those prophecies came true. Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, and it's there's lots of archaeological evidence and stuff. The Indian religions are spiritual. The Native American Indian religions are spiritual type things. And some people just want to be spiritual. But the problem is uh, there's only one God. And it's up to you to know who that one God is. Because you're the one that's going to have to answer for that in the end. So uh, people that just want to go for something because of a feeling should know facts and and uh, the Bible actually has facts, and 
<clears throat> you know it can be trusted because, again, it's the only book that there have been pro there were prophecies made. All of them have come true, except a few that we're still waiting on. So that's the thing is, a lot of people when they want to do that, they're just kind of they float around with the wind, and it may not be a good time to talk to her about it. So I just wait for that opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Chris has a question for you. Why do guys use more toilet paper than girls? Um. Do they? Yes. Because <laughs> they wad instead of fold. I was going to say. Oh. oh, your mom's texting me right now telling me, I forgot to tell you, I almost slid into your fire hydrant last night. <laughs> so for, so somebody asked about the snowblower. So we can snowblow that. But the problem is when it melts, it's a shaded spot. So it melts in the sun at the top of the driveway, runs down to the shaded part and freezes. So that's a, the problem that we're having. There's really nothing we can do to fix it except cut down a really pretty tree that's right there. So uh, Laura, if you get the purple, if you can't get the purple gluten-free flour from Walmart, the kind that I like the best, do you have to add any alternatives? You may have to add xanthan gum, but just make sure it's an all-purpose gluten-free flour and you should probably be fine. But if it doesn't have xanthan gum in the ingredients, then you'll need to add that. That is what makes it fluffy and rise like normal bread. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Thank you for everyone who just ordered. Deborah just ordered. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Um, so everybody's saying put it into low. That's interesting. I Well, hmm. see, I would be concerned on a front wheel drive. Because I had an accident years ago. I had I used to only drive rear wheel drive for years and years. And then we ended up with front wheel drives and I drove them for a while. And when we were in Idaho, a deer walked out in front of the road, in front of the car, but it was far ahead. And it was super slick that day and I didn't want to brake. So I put it into a lower gear. And uh, at first the car was fine. And then pretty soon the back end of the car came around the front and it started spinning around in circles and went over the edge. And, um, they told me that that's not the right thing to do in a front wheel drive <laughs> to let off the gas or to put it in the lower gear. So I don't know. I'm trying to think of how that would help on the curve, but uh, I don't know. mostly I know I did learn in that accident that when they say steer, steer into the slide, they mean steer in the direction the car is going, not the direction you want to go. But with front wheel drive, um, someone later told me that I should have, pointed the wheels a little more in the way I wanted to go and accelerated slightly that it, in theory, yeah. if there was traction, it would pull the car out. So I, I loves our video that we did on leaving the cult. She was so informed and just such a great Bible teacher. Yay. I'm so glad you like it. Yes. I did have to close the comments on that. Sorry about that, but it just was getting out of control. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to argue with you people. And <clears throat> If you don't want to use the King James, if you only want to use the King James version, you go right ahead. But I'm not going to sit there and argue with people about stuff like that because it doesn't even make sense. Stuff like that. Mike had an excellent answer for that. So you tell him your answer for the King James Version about all the other people in the world. Oh. That's excellent, <clears throat> actually. Well, actually, yeah. I, I was saying why all the other people in the world who did not have Bible translations before, why did they get to read it in the language that they speak now? But some people think that we should read the Bible in the language that people spoke over 400 years ago. In America. Uh, that 500 doesn't even years make ago. sense. Actually, it was 500 years ago. So to be King James only doesn't even make sense. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. Why should other people... So you're saying that other people in the whole entire world... I mean, what? Billions of people. What? Eight, seven billion people? I don't know how many English speakers are in the world, but let's say 7 billion people aren't supposed to read the Bible in their own language. 7 billion, I think, is the world population. English it's is 8 probably... billion is how many people's in the world. So I'm just saying a billion people speak English. Probably a billion, yeah. So 7 billion people are not supposed to read the Bible <clears throat> because they can't speak English? That doesn't even make sense. So anyway, just I'm not going to keep going. But what do we think of reverse mortgages? They are a total ripoff. I would not do them. Just move to a cheaper place if that's what you need to do. But I would, um, I would uh, definitely uh, 
not get one. Would it help you to put a detour for the water? No, not really. But it is interesting. We do have, they do have the, the guards, the guardrails. We do have guardrails on our driveway because if you go off our driveway, you're going to be ending up in going a long way down. Yeah. You're going to be going a long way, way further than he did when he had his accident in Idaho. I mean, you're going to be going a long way down. So they have guardrails. They have put up guardrails. I don't think the guardrail would stop you. Uh, you don't think it would stop you? I don't I think, think it, it would stop you. Well, oh, yeah, it would stop you. In Colorado, when people would hit the guardrail, they'd go right over the edge and take the guardrail with them. I think it would stop you. <laughs> you're not going that fast. It's not like you're going 50. Well, that's true. It depends on how fast. I mean, if you're going, if you hit it at 20 or less, it might not. But if there's any, well, we don't drive that fast around the corner. We probably wouldn't five or 10 when we go around yeah. that corner. Yeah. Uh, you guys better get health insurance in case you slip and fall again, so there will be no need to pull the plug. We actually we have <laughs> we have health coverage. We do have health coverage, but mine only covers eighty percent. So I'm sitting here thinking, okay, so if I got a million dollars in ICU for a heart attack, what's twenty percent of that? That's two hundred thousand dollars. I don't know if that's worth it, especially if you lose your house and everything. So if I die. And you die at the same time, then they're going to take it all from the house for the kids. Wait, you mean if we don't die? No. So if we're in ICU for 10 days and it's a million dollar bill and we die. Well, you're the only one that would have that problem in theory. I know. So I have a $200,000 bill left. Whatever's left for the kids, they're going to take it. And I know we have more than that, but still... That's a huge chunk of change. You have more than that. What? Well, I mean, the kids would get more than that if oh, we died. I gotcha. I see, I see. But $200,000 is a huge chunk of change for the kids not to get because they take it from the sale of the house or something. Then later, yeah. hospital's not going to let them get by without paying that. I don't know. So, Kimmy, if you're still on here, here's what happens. If we're on our vacation together and you have to make the decision... If I twitch my nose, let's see, how do I twitch my nose? Okay, never mind. If I blink once, so if I blink once, that means keep me alive. If I blink twice, that means pull <clears throat> the plug, okay? So now Kimmy will know if we're in an accident, I can signal Kimmy. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, I, I'm not particularly worried about that. Although I did tell Tara, maybe for her, we should get some sort of supplemental thing. But um, I didn't realize that it was a 20% on, on, because the rest of us are on something different. Um, echoing says, what if you don't, Echoing Erudite says, what if you don't pay the bill? I think if it was beyond your reasonable ability to pay, they would probably reduce it or make arrangements with you and pay, uh, write off a bunch of it. Uh, a lot of states have a rule that if you're in, uh, that, that your house can't be taken away for debt. Uh, yeah, but if we died, in, then the kids wouldn't well, get that money. So all that money we worked for just that, goes for me. Well, you want to go talk to a lawyer it. and ask him what happens? <laughs> Actually, we were already doing that. So. Uh, Why don't I have life insurance? They won't cover me. I have a chronic illness. Susan, that's why. Jane from the country, what do we think of 15-year mortgages? I think you should get a 30-year mortgage and pay it off in 15 years um, for a couple reasons. 15-year mortgages are a good idea, but they're best for people who can't really control their spending. Like, if Because if you get a 30-year mortgage, then the interest you pay... Um, if you get a 30 year mortgage, I think that the interest is a little less for a lot of the time because you're paying interest over a lot. It's longer, it's more interest in the long run. But at the very beginning of the mortgage, when you can be paying it off, it would be a more. And the other thing is that um, if you had an emergency of some sort, you have a payment that is fixed at that point. So, like with us, we've had a 30 year mortgage and uh, we try to pay extra on it all the time. But if, uh, if there's some reason why cash flow is a little tight this month, then we might not pay extra on it. So that's why I would do a 30 year and pay it off in 15. I'd just be super disciplined to do that. Yeah. 
So Susan and Amazing Grace want to know if you got to use the Snoopy cup or if I put it on eBay. Well, it was laying on the dish strainer, washed, and I was thinking, does this mean I can use it? It does, because I <gasps> love you. Oh, Happy Valentine's Day, honey. <laughs> oh, they heard me say you call you something <laughs> else now. <laughs> <coughs> So we just recommend 30 year just for cash flow issues. Like if you have an emergency come up or something and I know all the financial gurus say 15 years and I totally get that, but whatever it's however you want to do it. So yeah. On a mortgage, is it true that if you pay an extra payment a year, you will pay off five years earlier? Yeah, you do. Oh, I have a few others. It's that... quite a, it's quite a bit earlier. I do know that it's like if you pay an extra payment one year, you cut off like three or four payments. I can't remember. It's something like that. We figured it one time, but I can't remember what it was. Our interest rate was a little higher at the time, but I figured out that if I pay one extra payment, it takes three payments off the end. And at the interest rate that our house is now, it might be a little less. That, but now the interest has gone up again to about, I think, where it was when I calculated the three payments off the end. And that was helpful for me to remember because I was thinking, wow, if I pay $20 extra today, it'll be worth $60 when this is over. And then I started doing whole payments and realizing, wow, if I pay an extra payment now, at the time our payment was like $800 a month or something or eight or 900, it was a while ago. And I, I remember thinking, wow, if I pay an extra 800, it'll take $2,400 off the end. And that was really motivating for me. I like to play mind games like with numbers and with, you know, it'll be like, maybe I should put an extra hundred dollars on this to get it below X number of thousand <laughs> or <laughs> what you just did. Yeah. And, and then I'll think, oh, well, if I get it to here, it'll be the halfway point. So I need to put a little, maybe if I squeeze a little harder to get to the X, the halfway point. So, well, and sometimes it goes a little crazy and like we have to pay for the next printing of gluten-free dairy free. And we have to pay for the next printing of the planners also. And then we had to pay for the kitchen remodel. And then he got all crazy and it was like, oh, I think I can get the mortgage down under $100,000. I'm like, but we have all this stuff to pay. For. No, I think I can. I just send it. And then he was sitting there. He's like, send oh, it. I shouldn't have sent that. Now we don't have the money to pay for this, blah, 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 blah. I'm like. Well, what happened? So, hold on. So then the next day he was like, oh, I forgot we had this payment coming. Oh, no, we're fine. Okay, now everything's paid off. <laughs> I do. Uh, I have I'm a polar paying off our mortgage. I keep a spreadsheet that I recalculate <laughs> now and then to look at all the things that are that are that I know we're going to have to pay, but are, haven't been billed to us yet. And all the things, all the money that I know is coming in because we've already made it, but it just hasn't paid out to us yet. And I do that. I kind of look at that to understand it. But um, there was recently I kind of <laughs> I'm just going to send it. But uh, on that one, it started to look like the cost of the kitchen would be more than we thought. So that's Big surprise. That's where I realized, oops, I paid extra on the house. And now the kitchen looks like it's going to cost more. It's going to work out. I Because I was only when I calculate, I would say this is a good thing to think of with your bills, by the way. When I calculate on that spreadsheet, I think we know this money is coming in. We've already made it. It's just is waiting to pay to us. So it's not counting money that we haven't yet made. And, and the here are bills that we know are coming. And I count that. But I don't count income that we should be making between now and then. Like, I don't count our regular income at all. Because I think, what if we suddenly didn't have it tomorrow? So that way, I... I try to keep the expenses that I know we've already, this would be a good thing for the government to learn how to do, <laughs> but it's where I know we've committed to these things that they haven't billed us for yet. And so I'll put them on the spreadsheet and I will not spend more than what our, uh, what things we've already, the money we've already made that hasn't been, checks haven't been cut to us yet, but we've already made the money. So it's still a cash basis, basically. We're we're not stretching beyond. Uh, Dee Dee, this is our studio kitchen. This isn't mom's house, so it's studio kitchen. Yeah, Space Girl does say um, something that I think is a good point. If you pay extra on your mortgage, make sure to call your mortgage company and tell them the extra goes to principal. She said, I paid extra for a year, and they sent it all back to me at the end of the year. 
Yeah, I, I, there's a spot that says additional principal and you have to put it on there because otherwise they'll just take off more payments. And I called one day to say, hey, I paid extra on this. I marked additional principal and you made it as a payment. And the lady said, well, wouldn't it be nice not to have to make a payment next month? And I said, yes, but I'm trying to pay off debt and not making a payment next month isn't going to get us anywhere. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, you have to be sure to do that. So I did send you a few more and email oh, if you okay. wanted to look at them. Um, <clears throat> is it cheaper to turn the lights off and on? Just get LED lights and stop worrying about it. And LED just, lights are pretty I mean, cheap. I, we still turn them off, but I mean, I don't think it's safe. It doesn't save. Just leave them on. Uh, Susan says her favorite video was using the, the outdoor washing machine. Yeah, that was something, wasn't it? Do you think that using toilet paper for Kleenex is cheaper than buying Kleenex? Probably. I think it probably is. And I love the Thrifty Tuesdays. Thank you. She gets lots of ideas. Thank you. I'm trying to do one every Tuesday, although this week's is going to be pretty slim because I haven't been to any thrift stores this week. Well, I have for Mike's brilliant idea, but I can't show that because it's Mike's brilliant idea and it's a... Um, it's a Brad. secret. So Brad, if you're watching, don't tell anybody or I won't shop there anymore. Okay. That's a lie because I would still shop there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll still get good deals, but. <laughs> wow. Brad. Um, Amy. Okay. Let's see. Do I use pure vanilla or imitation? Nancy wants to know. So if I have to buy vanilla, I use imitation, but when I do, Showing how to make your own vanilla, I use the real vanilla because that's just a recipe and it lasts me a really, really serious or really long time. So Ooh, I've Jane. been using that vanilla for like two years now. So sorry, Jane from the country. Mike, do you ask Tara before you send extra on the money on the mortgage? Nope. But I wouldn't care. So I don't really care. So when we first got married, <clears throat> I had a big spending problem and Tara had a big adding up the checkbook problem. So what we agreed is that she would spend the money and I would balance the checkbook to make sure it was all fine. And over the years, I've kind of modified that. So <clears throat> uh, at one point I started keeping extra money in the checking account that we never spend. So that if there's a problem and something goes wrong with the account, we never overdraft anything ever. And then further down the line, it got to where I was thinking, you know what? Tar doesn't really want to know all the nitty gritty details of that stuff. Like if I was going to go out and buy a boat or something, then okay, I would need to know. Yeah. And I don't, I, I don't, and I wouldn't buy a boat. I just, I'd anyway. rent a boat, but, <clears throat> but I mean, you wouldn't just go buy a car or something without asking. No, me. but if I was going to buy something big, I would <clears throat> definitely run that by her. But when it's paying off debt, I know she's going to be all over that. And so I just look at it and I let that decision be on me. And then, you know, I, I will tell her later on, I'll say, oh, look, look what our balance is now. Because I know that that's going to be encouraging to her. But I don't ask before I pay off any debt. I mean, and, and, and also, I don't tell her all the time what the bills are. Because I think, you know, yeah. she might worry about it if she knew something and it's really not worth worrying about. And it's totally fine. And now that we're rich, I just go buy stuff. But if it's something like a, like buying appliances, I'll say, do we have the money for this before I go buy it? But I don't buy big stuff. I do give myself like a hundred bucks a month now to buy my thrift store stuff and my clothes stuff that's not normal, that's not needed for the house, like furniture for the house or something. If it's just fun stuff that I want, I do give myself like a hundred bucks a month now to just go spend on stuff like that. <gasps> what? You didn't I ask know. my permission? No. <laughs> I know because but I'm the one that does all the bills. What's sad is I don't even think I spend that. And so if it's stuff that I need for the house, I don't count that in that. So like if I need containers for the kitchen or something, even though it's something that I like, I still need the container for the kitchen. I'm not going to count that in my fun money. But I never got my hair done, really. I never did my nails. I never went shopping or anything like that when we were poor. And so now I spend, I mean, I'll just buy me something if I like it at the thrift store, but I don't just go to Maurice's and buy $500 worth of clothes or anything. Is Maurice's a, a chain? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought it was just here. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I think Tara actually, even though she's let herself spend more lately, there are times where I think, you know what? 
it would be okay for you to spend a little more than that. So I try to remember that at holidays <laughs> to give her things that yes. she won't buy herself, but, but I know you. she would really like yes. them. Yeah. Yes. So, um, let's see. Or am I visiting the restore when I go to Cheyenne? I didn't know there was a restore in Cheyenne and actually I might go visit them to see if they have flooring. I cannot find flooring and I can't figure out flooring. So, my car is going to be stuffed with 19 boxes of planners, undated planners. If you guys want the planners over 400 pages right now, livingonadime.com, a good little commercial there. Um, but uh, I might stop and see if they happen to have flooring. I did oh. not know there was one in Cheyenne. So thank you for that. I probably will. And yes, someone said, take us thrift store shopping. Actually, that is on my list of videos to do. I was waiting for mom to start feeling better because she was coughing a lot. And um, so I was waiting for her to get better before I do the thrift store videos. But yeah. Um, okay. Susan says that's twice that you have mentioned a boat this week. Really? I didn't remember the first time, but. I have to say, this week's stupid comment of the, of the week I'm going to start doing the stupid comment of the week. Is Mike saying something about a boat? This lady, no, but it relates <laughs> to that. This lady was like, oh. I, so I mentioned how I sit in the tub and wash the tub down while I'm sitting in the tub because it's easier to clean it. And this lady was like, oh, that's disgusting. I would never sit in the tub unless it's to soak. I just couldn't imagine cleaning myself in the tub. Okay. That is like number two most ridiculous thing i've heard this week <laughs> you would go to the lake and go boating in the lake go water skiing go play in the streams play in the rivers ponds whatever but you won't go in a bathtub if you're that much of a germaphobe i'm sorry you need some medication for something or some counseling because that's just ridiculous well and people used to bathe in streams and i know and and yeah, most, well, most people I knew, at least in the South, would go to the lake all the time. Well, there's all kinds of stuff in the lake that's, it's just, it's, I don't think there's a problem with the, the bathtub. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But yeah, anyway. Did you run out on that list, I think? Yes. So I think it's just crazy if you ask me, but, um, yeah. Do you wash soaked dishes? So why not a bath? I don't get that comment. Sorry, busy little house. Uh, I wasn't understanding what that means. Do you wash soaked dishes? LOL. So why not a bath? I think she's meaning because the dishes are in the dirty water altogether. Oh. Okay. <laughs> huh. Susan says, Tara, apparently they don't have fibromyalgia. <laughs> yeah. I I know we have a jetted tub, but honestly, I don't like the jetted tub. I don't like jets on the tub. I just like to soak. So I'm good with an old-fashioned clawfoot tub. But, yeah. Um, yeah, we need to get Tara the, the little tub that they advertise with the doors. <laughs> I'm, like, old now. I need the old ladies' tub. Maybe we should see if that tub company will do a sponsored video. <laughs> that would be worth it. Uh, okay, oh, says, she likes to soak and wash. Gotcha. I'm sorry. I did not get that. Sorry. <laughs> now I got gotcha. you. <laughs> it's been a really long day today, actually. Um, okay, good Foster, thing. welcome. Good, good to have you here. Dolores says, good thing she didn't grow up with my mom. They got to bathe once a week. The whole family used the same tub water. I know, I know, I know. We use the same tub water Mike and I do because I don't sit there and pee and poop in the water. My body's clean. It's like, seriously, people, this is not, I don't know, sorry. It's not like you're, you're taking a bath after four <clears throat> construction workers were in the same tub water cowboys were in the old days. I was going to say, it's not like when we were at the dump the other day <sighs> and it was all muddy. At that one, what's funny is, oh, I don't know if I mentioned that. I don't know if you said that in the video, but when we went to the dump the other day, it was so muddy 
it was like six inches of slimy mud like ice and we went to the car wash and i thought we were wearing boots and stuff like that and i was thinking i think i'm gonna power wash my boots yeah, and we, we did. did that with all of them because uh, it was so much easier than sitting at home trying to spray off boots with a regular hose. So, well, our hoses are frozen. We well, wouldn't yeah. have been able to do it. But even if it was the summertime, that was so much easier. I would probably do that again. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't do it on something that's, I wouldn't do it on your bare feet or something because that spare is really hard. But yeah. it was great on the boots. I wonder what they think of hot tubs. I know. I actually have probably more getting in a hot tub than I do the regular tub. I don't know. Some of the stuff are, yeah. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Busy little house says some of my kids had to have to share towels because they're clean when they come I out. I would hope so. It's not like you're wiping a poopy butt. You would think it would be cleaned in the shower after you're done. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't get these people. You have more money and time and energy and appliance buying stamina than I do by washing towels and sheets every single day. I, I, I don't understand how people do that. I just really do not get that because we knew somebody, they had their sheets and towels washed every single day. Yeah, that ain't happening in my house. Sorry. <laughs> They only had one kid, but I get a hobby, mom. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Ugh. Well, Cynthia says, I made the Amish bread in volume two, made it into the cinnamon bread, plus added raisins. My husband says, no more Pepperidge farm bread. I did oh, try the gluten free yeah. and it was the flop. What? So this one, the Amish bread is delicious. That was mom's bread. Super, super delicious. If you made the bread and gluten free and it was a flop, it's because you did not follow it exactly. Whoa. So here's the thing. We go through this every single time. You have to follow the recipe exactly. You have to have the correct altitude adjustment. You have to have shortening. You cannot use butter. You cannot use oil. You must use shortening. You must make sure your temperature is correct. You must make sure your baking powder is fresh. You must make sure you mix it well enough. You must make sure you use the correct size pan. Um, I'm trying to think of all the things that you must have the correct water temperature. Did I say that? I don't remember if I said that. Um, but you did something wrong. I guarantee you, if it did not turn out, you did not follow the recipe exactly. That recipe was tested over 40 times before it came up with this recipe. And I had my low altitude assistant test it. I tested it at high altitude and I've had tons and tons of people use that recipe. And every time it fails, we finally figured out they were doing something wrong. So just go and She's, follow it exactly. She says, in my defense, I was careful, but it was either my yeast or baking soda. There you go. Yeah. You're probably your baking powder was dead or your yeast was dead. So what I do is I just test my yeast before to make sure it gets all bubbly. And then for baking powder, you can do the same thing. Just test it before you put in there. Just put a little bit in some hot water and see if it bubbles and foams. She said she got out new before making the Amish bread. Yeah. Yeah. It was probably your yeast was dead. That's probably what it was. Yeast is dead is the number one cause. Water temperature is probably number two cause. <sighs> number three would be baking powder dead probably. And then wrong pan size is another one. So gluten free is more finicky about adjusting the recipe too, right? Yeah. Like if you change stuff because you want to try something different, it's more likely to fail with the gluten free yeah. recipes. Tanya says, I don't have very good luck with it rising. My bread is dense and dry. So if you're talking about my recipe, it should not be dense and dry if you're using the correct size pan and following the recipe exactly. So I don't know what well, she was says, going wrong there. She said I may try the bread, so it sounds like she means with other recipes. Oh, okay. Try mine then. Yeah, try mine. Um, oh, thanks, Cynthia, for tagging us. I haven't checked lately to see if I've been tagged for anything, so thank you. Did you ever make soda bread? 
Would you like, would like your, uh, yeah, I think it's in volume one. I think our soda bread is in volume one. And I really, really like it. Oh, Tanya said not our recipe. Yeah, so try our recipe, Tanya. You'll probably like it. Oh, Rob, little house off grid. How are you, bud? Man. <laughs> Hello, Rob. I noticed you've been, it looks like you've been doing pretty good. All right. I'm proud of you. Good job. We should come out to his secret location sometime. You, I don't think so. He has <clears throat> definite opinions about people showing up at his doorstep. Oh, we wouldn't just show up. We would be I don't want to get Mr. Smith and Mr. Wesson greeted. When, <laughs> I don't know if he hasn't said that, but. Oh, you know what? If we he, showed up and, and we encountered that, I'd be like, hey, Rob, that's really cool. You want to check out that? Well, never mind. We won't talk about that on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh poor rob we love you rob. <laughs> we have to meet in person actually our son's best friend lives in poplar bluff right now so we may have to just swing by there sometime and say hi we, um, we're having more and more reasons to go to that part of the country lately. yeah our son's in oklahoma now our other son his best friend lives there they've been talking about going to silver dollar city together and your sometime. brother's in kansas My brother's in wichita so yeah um so yeah we should probably go there sometime um <laughs> to work to wish it off yeah <laughs> to see our son is what i was saying. oh i thought you said when you said that i thought you meant no. i thought you were saying yeah we need to go visit these friends and these friends and our son and yeah i guess our bro your, your brother poor thing no wonder he's warped <laughs> are you kidding me he's like do i have to see my sister again <laughs> i saw you four years ago sister Actually, it's been, has it been? Uh, how long has it been? Well, it was when Grandpa died, so three years ago. Has it been that long? Two years ago? Three yeah. years ago? <gasps> three years ago. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, Rob says that would be nice. Then he also said my grandmother grew up in the Poplar Bluff area. Oh, wow. Oh, that's I would, cool. I wasn't really, well, Tara had heard of it from books, but I was mm -hmm. unaware of it until Jack's friend moved there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, guys, go check out Little House Off Grid. He's great. <laughs> He's been an inspiration to us sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Jace, yeah, we may be doing our own video on that, actually. Um, yeah, we won't go there yet. Jay Stratton, my gluten-free bread is the store was $9.45 on sale. Holy moly. Uh, yeah, make use our gluten-free bread. It's on the website. Just type in gluten-free bread, livingonadime.com, and you'll find it. Um, do we have tried waxing cheese? I have not tried waxing cheese. I don't know anything about that, actually. I thought cheese came uh, waxed sometimes. Oh, uh, the fancy thing. Uh -huh, it does. Cindy says, every time I get a good deal, I think Tara would be so proud. Sent my honey Walmart for 98 cents a pound turkey. Woo! When he came home, he told me there was another one. I sent him back for a couple days. Whoops. Uh, later, he got the last one for 98 cents a pound, but the self-checkout was messing up, so the cashier came over and scanned it. He came home with a whole turkey for 98 cents. Wow. <laughs> That's great. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. That's funny. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My husband bought a lot of cheese to cut smaller pieces to wax it, but it never got around to it. It's gone anyway, Grammy says. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I guess that's something I should try. I've never tried waxing cheese. Although I think it'd be fun. Why not? Guys, our cookbooks are 35% off right now for our Valentine's sale. Livingonadime.com. That includes volume one, volume two, and our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook. And um, our planners are in stock and I'm going to get the rest of them on Saturday in Cheyenne. So there you go. Livingonadime.com. We will see you guys next time. Bye, Rob, and bye, everyone else. Have a great night. Bye. Thank you for being here. <laughs>